Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is John Metropolis. That's spelled M-E-T-R-O-P-O-U-L-O-S. I represent the, today Dixon Mellons and Harley Hedick. Uh, Dixon Mellons is on a small, relatively small, 40 acres, but he's been there 25 years. He employs 25 employees seasonally. Um, he uses two and a half to four acre feet of water per acre to grow his melons, which are quite famous in Western Montana, and my wife tells me very delicious. Um, he, his wife, his family, his companies strongly oppose this compact. I also represent the Rocky Mountain Stock Growers Association. Kim Skinner is the president. There are 83 mem members, almost all irrigators. There's 40 associate members. They are in Granite, Powell, Deer Lodge, Madison, and Lewis and Clark counties. They are located in the Little Blackfoot area, Upper B Clark Fork, Flint Creek, Big Blackfoot, and Rock Creek. They oppose this compact strongly as well for a variety of reasons, but I want to hone in on one because I want to address a little bit of poison that may have been dripped in your ear already, and that is, why are these guys here? They're mostly taken care of. They shouldn't have much to worry about. They got 10 years to wait and negotiate. Well, they're not mostly taken care of, but the big issue is this. They are here because as farmers and ranchers, they know the value of water and they do not want to be party to throwing under the bus, that phrase, the irrigators on the Flathead Reservation. I've, I've worked on this issue for 26 years. It's difficult to see the fracturing of Montana agriculture under a threat. There's some aspects of, of the threat of litigation which are real. Some are not. There are some aspects which are more serious. Some are not. The Rocky Mountain Stock Growers Association doesn't want to be party to that. And we don't think the state does either. And we don't think the legislature does either. Now, I just want to address a few issues. I've already touched on the threat and I'm not going to take too much more time. You, you see me here every day. Every one of you has my email address. I will talk to you at any time about any aspect of this. And anything that I say about it can be made public and will be cited to specific provisions of the compact, which, unlike many people, I have read three times from front to back, not the appendices. I, I've, I've skimmed many of those, but I, I can't say I've read them all. I don't understand it all. It, but I work at it every day, and I will try to work with it, with you, through it, to answer the questions. But what I have found so far tells me it's just not a good deal for Montana. Um, there are some exclusions from compliance with important Montana laws in here, 13 of which, which I sent to you yesterday. Um, and there are some real questions about the legal basis of the threat of litigation, which I don't know whether it has been fully investigated or not. But I don't think that they have. The, the tribes, as you know, as a judiciary committee, um, some of you lawyers, They've had many opportunities to sue the United States for various breaches of their treaty. They took those opportunities. They succeeded in many of those cases. Some of those claims were for irrigation water delivered to my former clients, the irrigators under the Joint Board of Control. I don't think the Compact Commission took that into account and the raised judicata effects of that, the issue preclusion and claim preclusion would have to be taken into account by any lawyer before he or she decided they had to compromise. I don't think they have been. Anyway, I will close by saying um, I accept the good faith of the Compact Commission, which has worked for years. I expect, especially want to note 
the good faith of the Attorney General's office that got involved at the last minute. I recognize they worked hard to improve this document and frankly I think there are some small improvements. Um, but it doesn't fly. I really do not believe that it flies and I can tell you from my clients, Mr. Hedick, Dixon Mellons and the Rocky Mountain Stock Growers, it doesn't fly. For those reasons and, and the ones that I will give you if you give me some time this week, we urge you not to pass this bill. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, my name is Boone Cole, C-O-L-E. I am a co-chairman of the Flathead Joint Board of Control. We are uh, an elected government which represents the fee land on the Flathead Irrigation Project, uh, which is about 90% of the acreage, or about 110,000 acres owned by about 2,300 families. Irrigation within the project accounts for about 90% of the consumptive use of water in the basin. You've heard a lot about uh, the negotiations that took place and, and uh, the compromises that were made and that's what I want to speak to today uh, is the joint board's role or lack thereof as representative of the irrigators uh, in this negotiation process. After the CSKT compact failed to pass the 2013 legislature, uh, due at least in part to the outcry from our irrigators, the Flathead Joint Board of Control, or Joint Board as I'll refer to it, spent the summer of 2013 holding public meetings throughout the reservation and compiling all of the concerns of our irrigators. In September of 2013, the Joint Board presented our three main concerns, or the three main concerns of our irrigators, uh, to the Compact Commission, to the Governor's Office, to the Attorney General's Office, and to the Department of the Interior. Incredulously, neither we nor the districts that comprise the Joint Board received a response from any party. The concerns of our irrigators, which had helped defeat the Compact in 2013, were met with silence. We practically implored the parties to listen to us to address the concerns of our irrigators to no avail. Finally, and ultimately, in 2000, October of 2014, the Joint Board was granted a, a semi-official meeting with representatives of the Governor's Office and the Attorney General's Office. At that meeting, we were told that two of our three concerns were non-negotiable, and that if we were not willing to give up on them, uh, the meeting was over. For the past two years now, with the limited renegotiation of this compact, the elected representatives of 90% of the Flathead Irrigation Project, those people most affected by this compact, have been afforded no participation in the negotiation process. They didn't even want to hear our concerns until late last fall, shortly before the, this session began. The Joint Board has always maintained that we supported the compact process and that we wanted a good agreement. Our concerns that have been addressed and will probably continue to be addressed are not unreasonable. But we also maintained that we would not support an agreement that did not protect our irrigators. The Joint Board of Control hoped that we would be here today arm in arm with the other parties promoting this compact. But being ignored and marginalized, we find ourselves opposing this compact in order to defend the rights and livelihoods of our constituent irrigators. Please do not pass this compact. Mr. Chairman, uh, my name is Tim Orr, O-R-R. I live in St. Ignatius. My family's farmed there since 1873. Uh, my grandchildren are the sixth generation to raise cattle in San Ignatius, Montana. I also represent the Flathead Joint Board of Control in the South Mission District. Um, for your information, uh, this is my grandson here. This is Austin Taylor. Uh, he's holding a copy 
of the compact, the whole thing. And we just wanted to show you that as well. Just, you can just see it. And we need it back. We don't have that much paper in the office to reprint it, so. <laughs> One more thing I'd like to, Mr. Chairman, I've got a couple maps here that I would like to show. Mr. Chairman, what, what we have right here is some land status maps. The one that, that uh, Mr. George is holding is a 1912 land status map. This will show you the, the tribal allotments in 1912. Mr. Cole has a 2010 land status map. The important thing about this, uh, you can see the black there is tribal allotments and the yellow is homestead land. If you look at the other map there, you can see that, is that yellow, Boone? The yellow is fee patent land in our valley. The orange is the tribal allotments. Mr. Chairman and committee members, the reason that I'm showing you this map is all that land that has been bought up by our citizens in our valleys has Walton rights to it. And these have not been addressed in this compact. That is a very serious business. My land has Walton rights. My dad purchased my land just like these 23 other irrigators that you see in this building. As you heard um, Boone say the difficulty that the Joint Board of Control has had, I would also like to submit a written transmit, a transcript of what happened, how the water rights got filed over here in Helena in 1982. The gentleman, the courageous gentleman that got this done is in this balcony today. The BIA locked up the water right receipts in the Flathead Project vault, which is still locked today that we can't get into. And this, I beg you guys to read this before you make a decision. They did get over here. The attorney brought them over, they were filed. And this shows you the difficulty that our irrigators had protecting their rights. This was in 1982. So if I could have someone pass this, if you can do it, Austin. Mr. Chairman, I'm a member of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes as well. Like I said, I farm and ranch in St. Ignatius. I oppose this compact. I also worked for Flathead Irrigation Project for a few years. Me and another supervisor, we opposed this compact. We looked at the abstracts. We looked at the amount of water that was running. We looked at the amount of water that our irrigators were going to receive. And so we started making some noise about it. We were suspended, and I was suspended and demoted. A friend of mine was, was demoted because of his opposition. You can go to the Montana Labor Board over here, and you can see we have a just cause. I also rent tribal land. Uh, my, our farm is made up of tribal leases. Some of them I've had for 30 years. My opposition to this compact has caused me to, lo to lose two of my leases. I got a couple left, it's just a matter of years. So you can't come out against this thing if you're a tribal member. As I said, one of my biggest concerns is the amount of water that we're gonna get as irrigators through this compact. And we have had study done, it's gonna be about 50% of what we've been used to. And that's not acceptable. We've got generations coming down the line here that ain't gonna have a chance. The water that we're gonna get in this compact, we figure we got four or five years and it's gonna make below average agriculture in our valley. These people, who bought all this land. You go back to the 1910s and 20s, they paid $2 to $7.50 per, per acre for this land. They had to have one third cash down to buy it. We've all put our blood, we put our sweat, we put our tears, we put our life, our being into our farms. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the committee, I just cannot see giving up a water right and property rights and rights to our courts 
that have been fought for for years in this nation. I just thank you for your time, and I please urge you to please read that testimony. Thank you.